I hope this is not the first time, but there will also be occasions when I shall need Mars to come to this place here and have a word with you as I'm having now. Another fortunate thing I noticed is that all these speakers who came here to address you spoke about the most important issues which I also were to touch upon. All that is left for me to do now is to underline some of the things they spoke about. And the first is about the struggle. The pan Africanist Congress sees the struggle as clear as daylight. The struggle is about the land, as it has been said before. We lived here happily before the arrival of the white people in 1652. They took the land away from us, and now we want it. That is what the struggle is about. We, the members of the pan Africanist Congress, interpret the struggle as the repossession of the land of which you have been robbed by the foreigners. Now, many tactics have been used by the oppressors themselves, by the dispossessors, to dissuade us from this cause. One of the tactics mentioned here is the encouragement of black-on-black -black violence by the oppressors. Now, what I want to underline in this respect is that we know who our enemy is. He stands right there in front of us. And yet, instead of facing the enemy, we face each other and destroy each other. I want to remind you of the sons and daughters of, of Africa that it is the enemy, it is the usurper of your land that you must concentrate on and not, not your brother and your sister here. When we were arrested in 1963, that was the question, the land question. Sasi Funa on Klabawe too. That is another tactic of the Yuzepa to dissuade you away from the cause. Thousands of and thousands of African people are thrown into jail daily. That is a form of intimidation. The oppressor hopes that by using such tactics, eventually you will bow down on their knees before them and beg for mercy. Another tactic the oppressor uses is that of keeping you in starvation all the time. Now, if a person has been hungry for a long time, and somebody comes, and in this case it is the oppressor, and offers you a little crumb of their bread, you will accept that happily. Today we find ourselves in, this, in a situation where a portion of the oppressed population here have been filled with so much money in their stomachs that they are ready to do anything which the oppressor bids them to do. For 500 rand, one African may toss a grenade through the window of another African. For 500 rand, an African may go and report another African at the police station, and the poor African is arrested and sentenced to many years in prison only for this 500 rand. Some of you will remember what Robert Mangali Sosobuke said. He was speaking about this when he gave an example, an illustration of a jackal and a dog. You know the story, I need not repeat it, but what I shall repeat and stress here is that the Jacob, hungry and lean as it was, was not tempted to do as the dog was doing, to be chained and be given food. The Jacob said to the dog, I had rather live in poverty in my jungle than to be chained and be fed as you are. And it dates as far back as 1912 repressed because of the actions we took against the status quo. Today, because of this experience, we feel matured to tackle the problem in other ways. But are we really matured? If one can say, let us go to the round table and discuss the fate of our land here, I don't know if that can be termed maturity. Now, these concessions may be given. It doesn't matter how many they may be, but there is only one that can never be granted, and that is the eventual taking over of this land. If that concession is given, then it would mean that during the or in the next election, the government of this land will be in the hands of the oppressed and the user. The oppressor himself has told you that this question is non-negotiable. They have over and over again said 
het sal oor my lewe loose lichaam gebeur. I would like to align this then. You will never negotiate until you reach the point where your oppressor may give you your land back. The question of negotiation involves statuses. If you are occupying a higher status and another is occupying a higher status, there cannot be negotiation between the two. There cannot be cooperation between the weak and the strong. And if there is any such cooperation, then it is a misnomer to say that it is co uh, um, cooperation for